Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of The Spark. Since 1964, Memphis Theological Seminary has worked to equip men and women of all races and faiths with the spark to do ministry for the real world. We're grateful to serve our community and proud to support WKNO. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark is provided by Christian Brothers University, Mueller Industries, My Town Movers, My Town Roofing, My Town Miracles, and by Serves. This month on The Spark, our theme is a helpful resource. We'll learn more about a leader in agricultural research, education, and conservation, a nonprofit that helps our police department solve crimes through public outreach, and a company that connects organizations and events with inspiring speakers. We'll also share a special moment from our Spark Awards 2016. Ever been excited by a new idea? Inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who making a difference in their own way so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders who are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. They're a nonprofit focused on agricultural research and development, education programs, conservation, and community engagement. I'm here with a fifth generation farmer and president of AgriCenter International, John Butler. AgriCenter International, 1981 is a special year. Give us a little bit of the formation, the history for AgriCenter International. You bet. So first off, thanks so much for having me, Jeremy. Really enjoy, excited about the opportunity. But our organization was founded because of a, a partnership between the state and the county. It started in 1981. And then Governor Lamar Alexander signed a bill, Bill 1340, that gave our organization its very creation. And so talk about, let's, let's go education, because you have a, a number of different uh, things we can talk about, but tens of thousands of students that are coming into Agris International through the education programs, reaching out to schools, busing them in. Give us a little bit of a snapshot when you talk about education, what that means. Yeah, so it can, it can vary from uh, any age group, basically from, uh, from just, you know, four and five year old all the way up to, to high school kids and college kids. So it's an opportunity to bring kids and show them something about, because I mean, we're a farm in a city, so we're a really cool site. I'm not for sure there's another AgriCenter International anywhere in the world, and we're right here in Shelby County. And we have the opportunity to focus not only on some opportunities to give kids a, a chance to see something different so they can actually come out to our research farm and, and walk through our farmer's market and, and see what fresh produce looks like or actually walk through our, our fields and get a chance to see what corn and cotton and, and, and even peanuts and rice, what it looks like when it's growing out in the field. And that's really interesting to kind of connect those dots. Well, absolutely. It means to know where their food comes from, to know... You know, and, and really to have an appreciation for the environment and what that means for not only feeding themselves, but for the future of our, of our world as well. Yeah, I actually saw a study last week by the National Dairy Council, and they said 77% uh, 70 per, uh, of the kids that were surveyed thought that chocolate milk came from brown cows. So it shows a little bit of a learning curve there, you know, right, and, and right. that's kind of funny to talk about. But, you know, it's really interesting as, as our society has become further removed from the farm, a lot of our kids just don't associate, you know, the actual where the end product comes from. So it's a it's a it's a great opportunity not only to educate but also kind of connect the dots and and to show how how important um, finding the not only a local product but also a wholesome and nutritious product. Talk about research and development because there's amazing things going on right here in our own backyard that we have no idea about. But these are things that really, from an innovation standpoint, really could revolutionize not only the food but how we eat and feed the world. You bet. So uh, we have an active research and development farm. We've got a staff with, with PhD experts that are focused on looking at new trends associated not only within agriculture, but also associated with uh, you know society as a whole. So for instance, you look at ag tech, which is a combination of technology and how it's impacting our industry. Um, but you've got drones and all kind of cool concepts that are kind of really 
on the cutting edge of being implemented not only on our farms but also in our communities. So it's a real exciting time to be involved within agriculture and it's also exciting to see how that technology is impacting you know all of the farm and ranch families across the state and nation. Talk about, you have a, a farmer's market there on campus. You have quite a few things for kids to do. I know during uh, you know, the Halloween, you've got a corn maze. So you've yeah. got all sorts of really neat things from a community engagement standpoint. Talk about that side. Yeah, so we're, um, we're actually the largest ag tourism site in the state. And we're the third largest tourism site in, the, in Shelby County. So we're 1.3 million people annually on our campus. And it ranges from events at our equestrian center, equestrian center at Showplace Arena to our farmer's market. Um, any Saturday, we may have two or 3,000 people run through our farmer's market. We actually have the oldest farmer's market in West Tennessee. It's open six days a week, Monday through Saturday. And we're excited to have a lot of different vendors there that are able to sell their local produce. And then you also have, you mentioned special events. I know Feast uh, on the Farm Gala is one of them, a, a huge opportunity to bring the community together to support the education programs. Talk about ways that the public can use Agris International. I mean, you have huge trade shows that come through. You, you have a, a quite a quite a busy calendar, so to speak. Yeah, it's a, it's a really happening place. So a lot of people associate our campus with the activity they experience. So for instance, it could be the Delta Fair, it could be the corn maze. And by the way, I'd like to thank you for all your help on our Feast from the Farm. It was an amazing event and it wouldn't have been the same without you. Hey, my pleasure. But it was a, it was a, so, so we're associated with our, with the event. Uh, what we found is that people don't really understand our mission. And so our mission as it, it involves around agriculture research and education, and then obviously we're very much engaged in natural resources and soil conservation. So we want to make sure that we, we tell the story about environmental sustainability and make sure that not only consumers, but also producers understand, you know, how important that story is for the future. So we want to make sure that we are able to preserve uh, land, water, air, everything that involves, you know, you know production agriculture and how, how that's disseminated to the non-producing consumer. Well, I think it's important because through the education programs, you bring them in, you do the outreach, they understand where the food comes from, but they do, they gain a better appreciation for the natural environment. Same thing when you're coming in and they're seeing whether it's the trade shows, Feast on the Farm Gala, all the way through, there's this you know, kind of permeating atmosphere of, hey, we've got to take care of our environment. And so all the way through, whether it's research and development, education, it all focuses on the conservation side as well. Um, talk about ways that we can help, because I think it's important for the community, you know, coming out to the events, that's one piece of it, financial contributions. Talk about ways that we, through volunteerism, engagement, financial, how can we help? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're a very uh, a small staff. We've only got about 30 full-time employees. So we, we, we have events throughout the course of the year that we literally need hundreds of uh, of volunteers to help put those events on. So we've got uh, anything from a fishing rodeo to a fall harvest festival. So our, at our fall festival, we'll have a couple thousand kids there and uh, people in the community are invited to come help and volunteer and help us through events like that because we, we literally have to have a staff of hundreds. So it's, it's a great opportunity to see you know, we've got a great community. People really volunteer uh, not only their resources, but also their time. And that's what's really most rewarding for a person, you know, in, in my position to see how much people care uh, about trying to give back. This is a wonderful community. Well, the last question is always the easy one is, where do they go to find more information? So tell them the website, social media, what, where should we go to find more about AgriCenter International? You can find us anywhere on social media, uh, www.agricenter.org. You can give us a call at 757-7777. Uh, and just please uh, come out anytime you're in. Our administrative offices are right there at AgriCenter International at 7777 Walnut Grove Road. Well, John Butler, greatly appreciate all you doing for coming on the show and sharing. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. They're a nonprofit helping our police department solve crimes through public outreach. I'm here with the executive director for Crime Stoppers of Memphis and Shelby County, Buddy Chapman. And let's start with a little bit of history for Crime Stoppers. Give us, give us some context for Crime Stoppers. Well, I started Crime Stoppers in 1981 when I was the police director. We had a councilman, Bob James, who most people around here would remember, and P.K. Seedman, who owned a big... Uh, firm, county firm, and they came to see me and said they had seen the program in Albuquerque, which was the first Crime Stopper program in the nation, and they said, what do you think? I said, I think it's a great idea. So, said, well, we have a little problem. We don't have any funds, we don't have a place to be, and we don't have any staff. 
So I had the old fire station across from St. Jude that uh, you, well, actually it is a fire station back again and using it as a boxing gym. I said, I'll give you that to operate out of and I'll give you some limited duty police officers as staff, but you got to raise the money. And so we went from there. And the rest is history. So the rest is history. Describe, because what you're doing is phenomenal. It's, it's working. We have a lot of success stories. We'll talk about those in a second. But, but describe the process for Crime Stoppers. Well, the process is, is to give people a way to report a crime anonymously. I say this in speeches all over town. There is nothing that happens that someone does not know. Someone knows everything out there. So the key is to give those someones a chance to say what they know. And Crime Stoppers does that by having an anonymous line. Uh, people often get me at speeches, oh, we know you got caller ID. And I always tell them, no, we don't. We don't want to know who our callers are because if we know, we can be forced to tell. And if we ever tell, we won't get any more calls. Uh, we have expanded that over the last few years so that you can now uh, text anonymously and you can send us an email anonymously. But the bottom line is, uh, you call in, you tell us what you know, uh, we check the veracity of that, then we let the police department know at the point, uh, and when that caller, that caller is given a tip number uh, and then told to call back and check, when the police department comes back and says that tip solved this crime or that tip we wouldn't have solved it without whatever level of, of information we received, uh, then when you call in the next time, you're told to show up on payoff day and you're given the location and I pay you in cash anonymously. I only ask two questions. I ask, what is your tip number? And I ask what you called us about. And the reason I ask that second question is because people do get someone else's tip number. So you got to be able to tell me a little bit about what you called on. Gotcha. I also have a fascinating program in the schools called Trust Pays. You're Island much schools. more than Crime Stoppers. So yeah, I mean, go ahead and elaborate on some well, of the programs. The way I said, I, I, I went out and I talked to, oh, for six months, I guess. I talked to students, talked to students, some who would never tell us anything, some who would, some who, you know, in between, I talked to parents, teachers, principals, and what I found out was that the students weren't calling us because they're not supposed to use the phone in school for the first thing, and secondly, because that's a very touchy job. Well, who were you talking to? What was that all about? Right. And um, so I came up with the idea of trust pays, and those words can be parsed in several different ways, but the bottom line is that the student can go to any adult member of the, of the faculty, anyone from the principal to the yard man, tell them what they know. That trusted individual never reveals who the student was, but he, he or she then goes, law enforcement, school security principal, and says, Billy Bob's got a gun in his locker. Uh, they respond however they want to, police department, school security themselves, however that is. If they find what was alleged, then uh, they let me know. They let me know where to pay off. I never learn the student's name, and I pay off at school, at home, Kroger Park a lot, and I do all three every month. And all of that money comes from, for the most part, private donors. Private and corporate donations, yes. So obviously us sharing information, extremely important, financial contributions to underwrite the Absolutely. cost, to be able to pay for the, the tips, um, the reward, that's a big piece of this. What other way can we help? Jeremy, if we're going to address crime in this city, we're going to have to simply say everywhere, black, white, otherwise, enough's enough. We know who you are. We know what you're doing, and we're not going to put up with it anymore. And if you do it, you're going to get, we're going to tell on you. Secondly is to quit making excuses for people who commit crime. There are some things, if everybody's going to enjoy our society, there are some things you simply cannot do no matter why you do them. You can't shoot into a car and kill a two-year-old regardless of how you feel about what the mother said or anything else. That's what we got to do. But going back to the rewards and the financial support, that's very important because I would like your listeners to know that we pay out somewhere between seven and $9,000 a month wow. in rewards. And your money goes very, very fast when you do that. So tell us the website, the phone number, how can we connect in? Well, 
Phone number's what it always has been. Best known number in town, 528-CASH, 528-2274. Uh, the website is uh, crimestopmem.org. And um, there, as I say, any numbers, you can go on our website. Uh, Crime Service is an excellent website, and you can, well, you can get a number of things. You can get how to contact us, how to report it, and you can also look at the crimes that are being committed. You can look at the crimes that we've got hanging out there in a cold case capacity. Uh, so uh, those are the ways you can come back to us. Well, buddy, I greatly appreciate all you're doing here in the Mid-South. Appreciate you coming on the show and sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. The Spark Awards annually recognize and celebrate individuals and organizations that have made outstanding contributions to the community. This year's recipient of the Education Leadership Award is Bud Ritchie of Rhodes College. I've been at Rhodes since 2003, and it is a remarkable institution for me. It's, it's the, the smallest place I'd ever worked before going to Rhodes was the University of Memphis. So I've enjoyed it enormously. And talk about your role, because you are a convener, you bring the community together on campus, off campus, everything in between. My role is to serve in many ways, in a functional way, as the ambassador from Rhodes to Memphis. I'm in community relations, my territory is Memphis, Tennessee, or more appropriately, Front Street to Carterville. I think from the college's perspective, it's important that we have conversations with entities in Memphis that include schools and nonprofit organizations and business and industry to find mutual good between their entities and our college. And that's what I did. So I convened people in, as part of that process to, to get smart people in rooms to make sense of how can we do something that would make Memphis a better place. And talk about your role because you're very good at working with students, especially grade school students, navigating their path to college and beyond. Why is that so important to sit down with students and, and mentor them and guide them, not only in college, but before they even get to college? I think all of us have an obligation in many ways to help those coming behind us. I was uh, fortunate to be the beneficiary of a great educational system, public institutions throughout, but learned enormously. And there were people who helped me, and I think we have a responsibility to help those who are in schools now imagine what life can be uh, and, and, and begin setting the expectation within self of, I will go to college, I will do these things. And I think a lot of it's just the attitude with which these students are are prepared to, to succeed. And I think it, there are times it takes encouragement from those of us who, who've been down that path. And then you serve on a lot of boards. You have Let's Innovate Through Education, Memphis Challenge, Overton Park Conservancy. Talk about your board service and why that's so important. I think the, the service on the boards that are in this space of education are important because it, it gives me an opportunity to kind of keep a finger on the pulse of how we're doing as a community and in, in, in encouraging young people to begin acting on those dreams of going to college. You're known for your shrimp broils and all sorts of stuff where you bring people together before games and you serve a lot of food. So talk about the importance of being the cook. I love it. I enjoy cooking. I grew up in a family where mom uh, cooked the everyday stuff, pop cooked the fun stuff, and, and uh, I had three sisters and I think dad for some reason assumed the girls could learn to cook. He made me watch him cook and, and it was painful to sit on a stool and watch Rude turn color. A lot of men of Cajun uh, heritage cook and, and so the biggest event is, is a Cajun Fest which takes place on November 5 this year and we'll probably cook for 1,200 people and I doubt we'll have any left. They're a company connecting organizations and events with inspiring speakers. I'm here with the co-owners of Executive Speakers Bureau, Angela and Richard Shelp. And so you guys do amazing work all around the world with events and companies hosting, you know, all sorts of inspiring events, but um, working with all these amazing speakers. So for starters, give us a little backstory for Executive Speakers Bureau. And you want to? Sure. Um, we started back in 1993. I was at IBM at the time, we both were, yes. and wanting to do something that wasn't quite traveling so much and working so many hours. So I took one of the packages, left IBM, started this company. Uh, as right the, At that time it was part-time, 
and uh, had one speaker and just a handful of clients. And we've been able to grow it from there say, now you to have thousands of speakers oh. and clients all over the world. So it's and changed a lot. many employees. Yes. And I want to talk about, because you know, it's an interesting business in the sense that, you know, to your point, we use you all the time to book all of our speakers. And one of the things that makes it really easy is the fact that we give you kind of a theme, we give you a budget, and then you handle the rest. So That's you right. go and you find um, the best fits for that budget. And so it's a really interesting model where for those that are doing a lot of events, you do make it very easy because here's the budget, here's what I'm looking to do, hand it over to you, and then you come back with recommendations. Talk about that process and trying to make it easy because I think that's something that you guys really stand out as not only the recommendations, but negotiating so that you get the right person for the right price. What we do is a little bit different than some of if there are other bureaus that are out there because we literally will go out to all the other bureaus. We do a lot of work co-brokering with other bureaus. Right. So if you come to me and you're looking for somebody on leadership and you've got fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, obviously I know your audience and I'll go out and I'll find absolutely the best person, no matter if they're an exclusive with us or somebody else or they're just somebody that I've found on my own, and we'll put that together in a proposal and send that to you. Um, sometimes there will be speakers that may be a little pushing a little bit out of that, but if I think that they'll come in and maybe negotiate because of the type of audience it is, then I'll add them to the list. And then we'll work through it. You and I will work through it and make sure it's the right fit and the right price. Really the differentiator between us and our competitors is our ability to look at a set of requirements that an organization gives us and truly give them the best speaker no matter how we source it. Give us some of the trends, because obviously you're working on the event side, you're working on the speaker side. Um, there's a lot of innovations, whether it's technology, even the speakers, the presentations they're delivering. But give us maybe one or two trends that when you're looking at, these are interesting things that are going on. Well, I would say one of the first trends that we're seeing is, is a lot of the topic areas that people are requesting are really focused on disruptive innovation, corporate culture, employee engagement, those kind of things. And what's interesting about that is, is that maybe five or ten years ago, the topic requests were more general leadership. Motivation. So it was, it, yeah, it was yeah. more about the leaders themselves. Now it's more about the employees. So you can see a shift going on in the organizations just based on the trending of the topics. So that's one trend that we're seeing. Right. Angela? Right, I agree. And I would say even if it's leadership, they're digging down to try to you know, work on team building within leadership or you know, really focusing on the employee engagement, you know, getting rid of the silos, bringing everybody back together. Absolutely. Well, even like you mentioned too with the companies, I mean, when you talk about LinkedIn, Uber, I mean, some of those getting really focused heavily on what are they doing and taking those best practices, sharing their expertise with obviously right. a different audience so that they can take those lessons learned and apply them to their business or their organization. Oh, absolutely. And I would, to piggyback on that too, is that about 70% right now of the requests that we get are now name recognition focused in some form or fashion. You know, one of the other things that I love about you is the fact that you are focused. I mean, obviously you're working around the world with these different events and speakers, but you're focused on your hometown. You're focused on giving back here. And so yes. you and your team heavily involved. You come out to things like Samaritan's Feet where, you know, you're washing kids' feet, giving them new socks and shoes, but you are putting on all sorts of opportunities for your team in your office, out of your office. Give us an example of why philanthropy is so important to you and Executive Speakers Bureau as a whole? A couple of reasons. Um, first of all, we love Memphis. We love our city. We want to give back. I mean, we're both from here. We love Absolutely. it. And it, to us, it's very important to give back. And it's fun. It's fun giving back. It makes, you know, it's fun for the people you're helping. It's fun for you. It's fun for our team. Our team, we have such a great team that we work with. And when we all get together and do something like that, it just, I don't know, we all leave happy. We leave feeling good. Um, and it just makes it wonderful for all of us. It, it's really improved the morale of our organization. And I will tell you, it makes them want to do other philanthropic things that are separate from us as well. So it's just, it's been a win-win across the board. It really has. It is. Well, I'm just thinking the like the, the red noses. Yes. I mean, the, you, you really have fun with it. But give us maybe one or two that stand out to you as just fun experiences, fun things that energize your team, but also that give back. We recently Jam. went to the St. Jude Jam, and we did that as a team. It was one of the most fun evenings that we could have ever had. We had such a ball. Um, and then, of course, just to give back to St. Jude, it, that's here in our hometown is just wonderful. I would tell you, we were able to bring in Andy Buckley from the office as an MC 
that was involved in the event, and he did it free of charge as a donation to St. Jude. Nice. And that was beautiful. And we, of course, were sponsors of it, but we also had an entire table of Executive Speakers Bureau employees, and I just think they got into it so much. You know, we even did some bidding during the live auction, and and it was just, they it's really, fine. they felt it, but it's the cause that's behind it that really makes it important. Well, Richard, Angela, thank you for all you do. Thank you for making my life easy, but more importantly, thank you for giving back to the Mid-South. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, you Jeremy. When it comes to getting things done, it's important to have a helpful resource. Here in the Mid-South, we're blessed with countless helpful resources like global corporate executives, nonprofit and education leaders, researchers and scientists, and so many other experts in their fields who are lending a helping hand. Organizations like AgriCenter International are serving as a valuable resource for innovation in agriculture, forestry, and natural resources, as well as education for children and outreach to the community. Crime Stoppers of Memphis and Shelby County is helping our police department and community fight crime. And companies like Executive Speakers Bureau serve as a resource to promote success and inspire people to make a difference. And they're also giving back with their own time to make a difference as well. So thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests, to watch past episodes, and to share your stories of others leading by example, visit WKNO.org and click on the link for The Spark. We look forward to seeing you next month and we hope that you'll join with us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of The Spark. Since 1964, Memphis Theological Seminary has worked to equip men and women of all races and faiths with the spark to do ministry for the real world. We're grateful to serve our community and proud to support WKNO. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. to give kids a chance to see something different so they can actually come out to our research farm and, and walk through our farmer's market and, and see what fresh produce looks like or actually walk through our, our fields and get a chance to see what corn and cotton and, and, and even peanuts and rice, what it looks like when it's growing out in the field. And that's really interesting to kind of connect those dots. Well, absolutely. I mean, to know where their food comes from, to know, you know, and, and really to have an appreciation for the environment and what that means for not only feeding themselves, but for the future of our, of our world as well. Yeah, I actually saw a study last week by the National Dairy Council, and they said uh, 70 per, uh, 77% of the kids that were surveyed thought that chocolate milk came from brown cows. So it shows a little bit of a learning curve there, you know, right, and, and right. that's kind of funny to talk about. But, you know, it's really interesting as, as our society has become further removed from the farm, a lot of our kids just don't associate, you know, the actual where the end product comes from. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity, not only to educate, but also kind of connect the dots and, and to show. 1981 is a special year. Give us a little bit of the formation, the history for AgriCenter International. You bet. So first off, thanks so much for having me, Jeremy. Really enjoy, excited about the opportunity, but our organization was founded because of a, a partnership between the state and the county. It started in 1981, and then Governor Lamar Alexander signed the bill, Bill 1340, that gave our organization its very creation. And so talk about, let's, let's go education, because you have a, a number of different uh, things we can talk about, but tens of thousands of students that are coming into Agris International through the education programs, reaching out to schools, busing them in. Give us a little bit of a snapshot when you talk about education, what that means. Yeah, so it can, it can vary from uh, any age group, basically from, uh, from just, you know, four and five year old all the way up to, to high school kids and college kids. So it's an opportunity to bring kids and show them something about, because we're a farm in a city, so we're a really cool site. I'm not for sure there's another AgriCenter International anywhere in the world, and we're right here in Shelby County, and we have the opportunity to focus not only on some opportunities. 
Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of The Spark. Since 1964, Memphis Theological Seminary has worked to equip men and women of all races and faiths with the spark to do ministry for the real world. We're grateful to serve our community and proud to support WKNO. Lipscomb & Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb & Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark is provided by Christian Brothers University, Mueller Industries, My Town Movers, My Town Roofing, My Town Miracles, and by Serves. This month on The Spark, our theme is a helpful resource. How, how important um, finding the not only a local product, but also a wholesome and nutritious product. Talk about research and development because there's amazing things going on right here in our own backyard that we have no idea about, but these are things that really from an innovation standpoint really could revolutionize not only the food, but how we eat and feed the world. You bet. So uh, we have an active research and development farm. We've got a staff with, with PhD experts that are focused on looking at new trends associated not only within agriculture, but also associated with, uh, you know, society as a whole. So for instance, you look at ag tech, which is a combination of technology and how it's impacting our industry. Um, but you've got drones and all kind of cool concepts that are kind of really on the cutting edge of being implemented, not only on our farms, but also in our communities. So it's a real exciting time to be involved within agriculture, and it's also exciting to see how that technology is impacting you know, all of the farm and ranch families across the state and nation. Talk about, you have a, a farmer's market there on campus. We'll learn more about a leader in agricultural research, education, and conservation, a nonprofit that helps our police department solve crimes through public outreach, and a company that connects organizations and events with inspiring speakers. We'll also share a special moment from our Spark Awards 2016. Ever been excited by a new idea? Inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who making a difference in their own way so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders who are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. They're a nonprofit focused on agricultural research and development, education programs, conservation, and community engagement. I'm here with a fifth generation farmer and president of AgriCenter International, John Butler. AgriCenter International.